I've always been curious about a construction in forces. Uh, and I always wondered why it's not very common to use glue uh, when you construct a house. So I thought it would be interesting to create two models, identical, uh, of a building, of a, a regular building here, using the same size lumber, with the only difference being that this one is constructed only with nails, and this one is constructed with glue and nails on all the joints. So let's do a couple of tests and see how they both perform and how much the glue is really going to help this one out. First test, no glue. Both houses are sitting on two plates. The plates are not attached to each other other than that the house is attached to the two plates. So here, this one plate is fixed to the bench. This other plate here, I have a clamp going and I'm going to do a shear test. Uh, basically, it's an earthquake test, kind of like if your house was sitting on top of a fault line. What I'm looking to see here is the shear forces. Is the house going to stay together as one or is it going to break as I put pressure on it? Starting here, this is on this line. Now let's put some pressure on it. You can hear a little cracking. This house is coming apart. I wouldn't want to be sitting at the dinner table here. The house is really crushing apart. Wow, look at that. This wall right here has failed completely separated from this wall, which in turn has made this roof less stable. This broke right here, which has separated this wall plate. On the other hand, this side remained intact. So you can see here that it was really, the weak point was right in the middle here. Now we have the glued structure. I'm curious, is the glue going to strengthen the wood itself? Because in the other model, it was the wood itself that broke, not the metal fasteners. I'm curious to see if there's any difference actually. So far this hasn't moved nearly as much at this point. Hear a little crack. I see cracking right here. This is much more rigid. It's not failing nearly as quickly and this whole thing is breaking there now. That's a very different fail point. Well, the whole plate has moved now a little bit. Definitely took a much more pressure to get it to that point. One absolute difference here is this plate is sliding. It's not opening up like that other one did. As you can see, I just put glasses on because I'm hearing a lot, of, a lot of popping here. This is unbelievably stronger. And so far, I'm only noticing this as the crack line. There's nothing on this side at all. So this is finally opening up. Huh. Hmm. The sill just broke off. The distance of this plate is now at the same point as the other structure was. So, I would say this house fared a lot better. So this simulates as if you had glued the sills down to the concrete foundation, as well as used uh, metal fasteners. An interesting point here is that this gap right here is so much smaller on this model. The only real damage here is this sill right here that broke. Let's move on to more of a hurricane debris test. Again, I have this plate fixed to the bench, and I have the good side of the house, the one that's not quite as destroyed. I built this pendulum, uh, and I have a lacrosse ball attached right here, and let's see if we can do some damage this way. That was pretty easy. So I threw the ball rather hard, so this is pretty much a simulation of something hard coming in during a hurricane, like a 2x4 flying through the wall or something. And as you can see here, uh, the wall plate uh, completely broke off here, but the rest of the house stayed intact. Yeah, I'm curious how this is going to do with glue now. I would imagine it would do a lot better, but we'll see. You know, this neighborhood went through a rough patch. They had an earthquake and then a hurricane after that, so. So let's try this one. Okay, this is much stronger. Even with that, this was the only thing that broke off. The whole structure remained intact. It was just the one stud that was uh, destroyed here. That is, that is really cool. You can even see how it broke here. It took off part of the wall plate. So it didn't even fail at the glue point. 
It was the wood that failed. Let's get a bigger wrecking ball. So now I have a bigger wrecking ball. This is cast iron. <laughs> wow! Even with this, it only took off the rafter at one point. The ridge beam is still intact here. God, that's so strong. Yeah, this knocked the ridge beam loose on this side as well. <laughs> but that took a lot of force for that to happen. I think we have a winner. I think the glue performed unbelievably better. So, if you are planning on building yourself a house and you're concerned about strength, I would highly recommend using some construction adhesive or even yellow glue. But there wasn't enough force here to totally collapse either building. I mean, if you had had people inside, they would have been fine in both structures. So overall, <laughs> they performed rather well uh, because there was no total failure point here. This was a fun test. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Oh, I have an interesting vlog on my other channel, Darby Notes, which is about the economics of zombies in a post-apocalyptic world. It's a little different and it's a special thing for Halloween, so go and check that out. Anyway, thanks so much for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you guys in a couple of days. Bye!